You're listening to Bonus Points, the official podcast of Mr. Astle's theology class. Join us as we put out into the deep and explore the world of theology and beyond. Today, I'm joined by Anna Camacho, and we're talking about devotion to St. Joseph. Let's begin. Hello, and welcome to episode 47 of Bonus Points. I'm excited for today because we have another guest speaker episode. I'm joined by the founder of Corda Candles, and I know it's going to be a fascinating chat. Before we get to that, though, remember to subscribe to Bonus Points wherever you're listening, share it with a friend, and check out our website, bonuspointspodcast.com. I'm joined today by Anna Camacho. For years, Anna asked for the intercession of St. Joseph, praying and hoping for some kind of work that was creative and let her work with her hands. One day during prayer, the idea for Corda was born. It took Anna many months of exhaustive testing to take Corda from an idea to the launch of their first products, but today Corda produces handcrafted candles with scents directly inspired by saints and the faith. Anna, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Mr. Assel. I'm really excited to be here. So, Anna, you are the founder of Corda, and you make scented candles inspired by the saints and the faith. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got here? Like, what made you decide to do this? Yeah, it. I will tell you, first off, I never, ever imagined I would be a candle maker, let alone have a full-time business, let alone have me and my husband both working full-time in the business. So um, that's one of, I think, the really neat things is how yeah kind of you can look back and see providence um kind of in your rearview mirror right but when you're in the middle of it you're just like what is going on um and so when i was kind of going through college and thinking gosh what am i gonna do and just really um had a heart for other people and um especially those who are kind of in more vulnerable positions or, or had tougher situations. And so I actually kind of started my quote unquote professional career in a prison, um, working with young men who had done some, some pretty hard things. Um, and then went to an emergency shelter and worked with teens who were in really tough situations. Um, and thought that that was really my path forward. Um, and, it didn't like from there um i had to leave for different reasons i got married and moved out of the state and the only job i could get um at the time after we moved after like a month of searching was cleaning somebody's house um and so i did that you know for a while and then that kind of evolved to the next thing and the next thing and some years later um i was in a job where i was just in front of a computer all day, every day, uh, really just kind of what it felt like to me was like moving things from point A to point B, just clicking buttons. Um, I really developed like a loathing for email (laughs) during those years. Um, And I spent about six years in those kinds of roles, just in front of a screen. And the whole time, I was just like, gosh, like, I feel like there's more right? Like, I feel like I should be, I could get something else. I was kind of, I felt like I was dying a little bit, you know, inside of me every day. And, um, but at the same time, it was like, well, I am here and this is, you know, helping feed my family and like paying our bills. And so I don't know if you've ever been in that position where you're like, you're present, where you are now, but at the same time, you feel really drawn to something else, but you have no idea what that is, right? Like, it's just like, oh, I, I don't feel like I should be here, but like, where am I supposed to go? Um, yeah, you're not in your head. Like, I feel like we all like have had those moments and maybe we'll have them our whole lives. Um, and in those years, which is like six years, because St. Joseph uh, always had a devotion to him and he is the patron saint of people who are looking for work, who are currently unemployed. So I just kept going to him and just being like, you know, I really, I really feel drawn to something where I'm working with my hands and I'm doing something creative and I'm like actually putting something physical that's good out into the world. 
kind of the complete opposite <laughs> of where I was. Um, and, and I just want to do this, but like, how in the world is anything like this ever going to happen? Um, and I would just give it to him, right? I was like, I can't figure this out on my own. I don't know what I'm supposed to do, but I trust you. And like, yeah, just giving it to him over and over again. Um, and then still just trying to show up and be present and do a good job and where I was. Um, and so after all of those prayers, all of that time, I was just like kind of bothering St. Joseph over and I'm being like, hey, it's me again. Um, I wanted to talk with you. And we, my husband and I are actually in mass and we would always sit on you know, the St. Joseph side, quote unquote, um, cause you usually have Mary on one side and then the statue of St. Joseph on the other. And we'd sit on the St. Joseph side and it was after communion, right? When, um, everyone has time to, to just kind of sit and be with Christ and pray. And I was just meditating on St. Joseph and just in that particular moment, not asking him for anything, actually just, just saying, thank you. Like, Thank you for being a good father. Thank you for taking care of your family, uh, which was Mary and Jesus, of course. Um, and thank you for just, yeah, being being there for me all those years. And and in that moment, it was like, hey, make scented candles, create scents that tie directly to their lives. And here's like four recipes, so to speak, for the first like four scents that you should start with, like in this one moment in mass. Um, and I really, that's why I say like St. Joseph is the founder of this business because it wasn't me. Like I didn't have all this experience. Um, I'd never run a product based business before. I never made scented candles before. Um, all the things that come with that. And, and I feel like it was something just kind of given to me of like this, this actually ticks every single box, you know, that I had been like wishing for all those years. Um, and it just kind of went from there. So looking back, you know, you, you had that moment of inspiration during mass where it all, it all kind of clicked and fell into place. Looking back, do you think St. Joseph was trying to drop hints before that? You know, looking back, do you think, oh, you, you know, I just saw a scented candle before that. Or do you get the sense that he was trying to clue you in and you weren't picking it up. So then he had to zap you during mass. <laughs> I do feel like this ain't sometimes zap you. Um, that's a good way of putting it. I know at least in terms of Senate candles, that was completely, I think out of the blue. However, in those years of prayer, there were other ideas that I had um to make something sometimes faith related, sometimes not. Um, and I could work at home and all those kinds of things, but the numbers never ever made sense. Or, um, whenever I talked about them, you know, and kind of drilled down into them with my husband, it was just like, this just wouldn't be good for our family, you know, like the, what it would require. Um, and so there are a lot of like ideas that we kicked around, but none of them really clicked. Whereas with this one, as soon as that idea kind of came into my head, it was this moment of just knowing like, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do. And um, really kind of falling in love with the idea, even though I was like, well, I've never even thought about this before in my life. Um, and I think what was another gift was after mass, I was like, oh, gosh, I've got to tell Michael. Um, but I don't want to, right? Because if he says no, if he doesn't fall in love with this idea too, it, I'm not going to do it. But it already hurt to think about that not being where, what I do next. Um, like I was just so captured by this idea. Um, and when I finally told him like an hour later, um, his first words were, you have to do this, um, like whatever you need to get started. And I think that confirmation of just like, yes, this is like for me, but it's also like good for our family and, and then something we can, we can do for other people. Um, and, and I think a lot of times, right. When, when you talk about discerning something, people say like, is there peace in that? Like, um, and, and sure you can interpret it 
that lots of different ways, right? Because we can kind of create or convince ourselves or whatever. But um, yeah, I feel like that was a, I had never had that like clear, clear confirmation before with any other idea. So it just felt like St. Joseph being like, no, really, <laughs> like, no, really, like, that's what you're supposed to do. I know that I annoy my students uh, when we talk about Ignatius's three modes of discernment. Um, mm-hmm. And I am I'm probably going to do a future episode on this. So if you're listening, keep an eye out for that. When we talk about the first mode, he talks about the sense of clarity and peace and just knowing what is God's will. And he says that sometimes that is dramatic the way it was with St. Paul, but other times it's not. Other times it's just a, a deep certainty that, you know, you don't have to really discern as intentionally as you do with the other ways. You just know, right? And mm-hmm. and I I can see the eye rolls when I say that to a class and they say, yeah, but what's it like? Yeah. And I say, well, you'll just know. <laughs> but what's it like? And it's it is it's that sense of clarity and peace. I think those are the words that Ignatius uses that you know it, you see it clearly and you see it peacefully. So there is you know in the face of that I'm sure you had questions in your mind that that were like, you know, I've never done this before. Mm-hmm. How can I start a candle company if I've never even made a candle? But at the same time when you have that sense, when you know, you know, right? Mm-hmm. So can you tell us a little bit about the name of the company? Where did Corda Candles, where does that come from? Yeah, um, I get this I get this feeling that you're a little bit of a Latin fan. Is that fair to say? <laughs> <laughs> that we've been on this call for ten minutes now and you've already picked up on it. Yeah. Um, so Corda is a Latin word. Um, it means hearts. And at least for me, it actually has three different meanings that all kind of apply to the business. Um, The first one is in the mass. Um, If you think about, okay, we've, we've done the liturgy of the Eucharist, we've heard the homily, and then we're shifting to the, the liturgy, or I'm sorry, we've done the liturgy of the word, we're shifting to the liturgy of the Eucharist, and we, we all stand up, right? And the priest says, lift up your hearts. And we say we lift them up to the Lord. Um, in Latin, that lift up your hearts is sursum corda. And literally, if you translate it, it's hearts up. Um, and I love that because it's such a like joyful thing to me. You know, it's this call. It's this invitation. It's also like a command, right? Like this is actually what we're supposed to do is live hearts up and and always be worshiping God. Um and I love it. It's like right at the heart of the mass as well. And because this idea, you know, came during mass, it just felt like this really neat kind of tie into that. Um, I, the, the second thing is I'm a Midwest girl through and through. Um, and I just love that, you know, we make everything by hand and we do it in the heartland. So that was kind of another tie in to the word corda. Um, and then Also, I think, um, I think sometimes we miss the heart or it gets, um, you know, we get super focused as Catholics into like the logic and the reasoning and arguments for the faith and, and, you know, it's, it's faith and reason, right? Um, and, and we're a whole person. And I think the heart is, is how we love God, you know, first and foremost. And um, there's all these great sayings, right? Of like, he has a lot of heart or, um, you know, she did that with so much heart or something like that. And just how the heart is like the source of strength and courage. And that's kind of, again, like a hearts up sort of mindset or approach. And so just kind of bringing all those together. In Corda, I loved that it was you know, a word that people probably haven't heard before. It was short. It wasn't too girly, I thought. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, because, you know, you want something that is just accessible, but also unique. And yeah, so it worked out worked out pretty well. I love that you mentioned talking about saints with a lot of heart or, or putting their heart into it. I don't know if you're familiar with the painting. And you know, it's it's hard with an audio podcast to talk about a painting, but 
it's a painting of St. Augustine and it shows him, you know, with one hand he's writing with the other one, he's holding out his heart and it's, it's on fire. I always just love that painting. You know, that's, that's really what we're describing here. And I think we, we neglect the heart, like you said. And when we do talk about it, I think that sometimes we minimize it, you know, not just us as Catholics, but within society, I think we've, we've kind of minimized the heart to just mean emotion. And that's a good part of it, right? That's an important part of, of what it means to be human. But when we use that word as Catholics, when the liturgy tells us, you know, lift up your hearts, it's, it means so much more. It's, it's really talking about the center of your being, the core of your being, everything that you are. And, and so I always love that. And, and this is part of why I've been drawn a lot to Eastern Catholicism. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I'm a Latin lover, but I also, I, I like that breathing with both lungs. Yes. Because in the West, we have the, we have the Thomistic approach, the scholastic approach. We, we got all the philosophy. And then the East really emphasizes that heart and, and that mm-hmm. encounter with God. And it is, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. So I, I also love how you, how devotion to St. Joseph factored into your story. Uh, maybe it's because he is silent in scripture. You know, we don't have any words of his recorded in the Bible, but I feel like St. Joseph historically has been kind of neglected. Um, mm-hmm. And I personally never had much of a strong devotion to him until coming to work here at a school named after him. And so when I first started teaching here, I thought I should probably get to know our patron a little bit. And since then, he's become one of my favorite saints. You know how you start to learn more about a saint, and then you know that that saint is up in heaven, like they're pulling you in too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's like, all right, we got him. He's, he's mine now. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And he has just become such an important saint, especially since getting married, since becoming a father. You know, he's he's become a very important saint to me, but he he wasn't originally. So... Have you always had a devotion to St. Joseph or did that also develop throughout time? Yeah, there's, I think, just a couple of scenes that I feel like kind of ever since I was little, I've just felt really, really close to. And he is definitely one of them. Um, I don't know if this is unusual or what, but I actually didn't feel very drawn to or, or close to Mary, actually. But I was a Joseph's girl, like... Um, and like, I've grown in my love and appreciation for Mary, like over the years and, um, and very much love her, but there's just something about Joseph, I think, because, um, maybe because he is so hidden, you know, there's something intriguing about him. Like who was this man that lived with Jesus and cared for Mary and provided for them and, um, what would have that been like? And, but also just, he was the person that like they depended on for everything. He physically, like literally carried them out of danger multiple times. Um, he put food on the table. He, you know, probably made them laugh, bought them presents, like, you know, just all the normal everyday things. Like you can't take Jesus's life and you can't take Mary's life and separate Joseph out of it. He's part of everything. He's woven through it. Um, and I think that's, yeah, one of the beauties is is how hidden his life is. Because I think he's so clearly, like, he just completely kind of, all you can see is, like, Jesus through him, right? Um, he's just so pointed toward him. And and I that's true of all the saints, I think. Um, but Joseph does it in a very unique way. I always loved thinking about one of Joseph's roles as a father would have been to teach Jesus. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he, he's the divine logos, right? He, he's created the universe and yet in his human nature, he learns, he grows and he entrusts St. Joseph with that responsibility. I mean, imagine St. Joseph teaching the word incarnate about the word of God, you know, teaching him right. the Torah, teaching him how how they would say their prayers. And, you know, I don't know that Jesus would have said this, but I can imagine him just saying, 
dad, you know, I wrote that, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, oh, it's, it's incredible. Just the, the amount of love and trust that God has for St. Joseph to entrust him with that. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's like to know that if we entrust ourselves to St. Joseph as well, we know we're in good hands. I mean, if, mm-hmm. if God thought he was good enough, I can too, right? Yeah, yeah. So do you have any any specific prayers to St. Joseph or books about St. Joseph? You know, if, if someone's listening thinking, all right, you sold me, I want to grow closer <laughs> to St. Joseph. Um, what are some, what are some, uh, some of your highlights, some of your favorites? Yeah, I mean, welcome to the Joseph Club. You know, the more the merrier. Um, I would say if you want something a little bit easier, um, just start with the Litany to St. Joseph. You can just online search Litany to St. Joseph. And I mean, kind of anytime you want to get to know any saint, if you can find their litany, that's just such a beautiful place to start because the church has given it to us and it gives us title after title after title about this person. So you learn about Joseph and you see his heart when you're praying this and it's things like terror of demons, glory of home life. Um, you know, of course, foster father of Jesus, um, most chaste of virgins, like all of these facets of who he was kind of almost like bullet pointed for us. And you just, especially if you pray it, you know, more than once or, or maybe over several days and, you know, you come back to it and different things stand out to you. So I really, really love his litany. Um, if you really want to get to know Joseph and you're up for a little bit of a challenge, the Holy Cloak Novena to St. Joseph is um, one of my favorites. It's a 40 day novena. And it probably takes about 20 to 30 minutes a day to say, um, I think it's 40 days. Um, but what is so neat is every single day, the meditation is incredibly rich. It shows how Joseph was prefigured in the Old Testament um, and connects him there. And, um, you know, all the New Testament things, his patronage is now in the way that he protects and and helps us in the church now. And it just kind of, yeah, like brings everything together. And it's called the Holy Cloak Novena because you, I mean, you've probably heard of that with Mary, right? Where you say, Mary, wrap me in your mantle. And it's the same sense of, of Joseph just kind of enfolding you in his care um, and with his strength. And yeah, it's not for the faint of heart. Um, every time I say I'm going to do it, I'm like, oh my gosh, can I really like, you know, commit to this? Um, but it is, it's just so rich and so deep. And it's something that my husband and I really love to pray together to and um, just draw closer to St. Joseph together through those prayers. Do you, yeah, what about you? Do you have any favorites that you found? Well, so I've actually never heard of the Holy Cloak Novena. I'm I'm excited by this. I hear 40 days. Yeah. Of course, my first thought is maybe that's what I'm doing for Lent this year. Oh, um, great. But it sounds like on a scale of, of a time commitment and difficulty, as far as novenas go, it's above mm-hmm. the average that like you get in your inbox from primornovenas.com, but it's mm-hmm. not quite the 12-year novena. Yeah. No, it's, <laughs> it's an intermediate novena for those who are, you know, you... You're, you're, you have a good hand at novenas. You want to ramp things up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always loved the litany of St. Joseph. That's, that's one that I go back to frequently. Um, as far as books go, there are two that both came out fairly recently that I just, I want to keep rereading. One of them is Joseph and His World by Mac Aquilina. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which it's interesting because he, he, he wants to basically say, what can we know historically? What can we, make some educated guesses about, but Mm -hmm. he does that in contrast to King Herod Mm -hmm. who, you know, their timelines overlap, their stories intertwine at some parts and, and then showing not only as how these, these two guys are kind of a a good example and a counter example of what it means to be a man, but Mm -hmm. even just saying, you know, Joseph probably found a lot of his work with all these projects that Herod started. So their lives are much more connected than we realize. Right. And the other one is perhaps for the more spiritual side or 
it, it's the book I bring to prayer, and that's through the heart of Saint Joseph by Father Boniface Hicks. Um, Ooh, I have to look that one up. And he's I, I love Father Boniface. He is he's from Pennsylvania. He's still he's a Benedictine monk in La Trobe, and mm-hmm. he just yeah you know, oh he speaks so beautifully about how we encounter Joseph in prayer, um, and how we you know, through his silence, through his fatherly care, you know, what that really says to us. It's absolutely incredible. Oh, wow. No, I appreciate that because I, yeah, I'm a big reader in general, but especially when there's something good about St. Joseph, I'm excited. I'll put that on my Christmas list probably. Um, And I wanted to, yeah, if we can go back to the one by Abelina, it's deceptively short looking. Right. It's it's a relatively small book, but it's and it was not at all what I was expecting from the title. Um, but yeah, it just all of a sudden it like peels back the curtain of first century A B and it's just like, here's what that actually looked like and what Joseph may have experienced and yeah, kind of he's looking for work, like he's dealing with the world in a very like anti-Jewish kind of approach and when yeah in scripture when you read and he had Herod was going to kill the child you have to go like that had all of this meaning and context for him that we just we don't see you know so yeah I I was surprised by that book and and it just came out right like earlier this year or maybe last year I think it came out last year yes right before the year of St. Joseph started um, cause you wonder like, did they plan that? Did they know about that? Know. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to pause the recording just for one second. It, yeah. It's saying you're offline. I don't know if it's still recording yeah. on your end. I see the little, like, you see you the know, little squigglies the on whenever you talk. It did, it did. I did get a pop-up saying server connection was lost, but then it said restored. Okay. As long as you're seeing a little squiggies, squigglies, whenever you talk, I, I hope it, that means it's recording on your end. Um, <laughs> Because I, I want to make sure we don't, because, you know, this is, this has been great. I don't want to lose it. Clearly, you're not okay. offline because I can still hear you, right? All right. Okay. So we'll we'll trust it and, um, you know, hope that it's, hope that it's working. <laughs> so to, to maybe bring it back to the candle making part briefly, mm-hmm. um, you mentioned you'd never made candles before. I'm just curious. How did you go about learning to do that? Is that a difficult process? Is it, I know, the only thing I know about candle making is back in the the olden days, you had to dip dip it a whole bunch. And I, I don't know, I don't think that's how they're still made. But I could be wrong. I'm not, so you mostly do like jar candles, right? So can you just tell me a little bit about how you learned to do that and what that process looks like? Yeah. Um... I I guess you would say like I'm kind of a DIYer or like I really love to figure things out by doing them um and I really like to learn something kind of from the inside out so sure I'll like use a cake mix but I really want to make like if I'm going to make tiramisu I'm going to make it from scratch in three tiers and like super fancy like I just love to go all in and you've probably experienced this where you, you discover something and then this whole world opens up and it's just like this rabbit hole of, and for me, that was candle making. I was really surprised by it. Um, because I didn't know anything. Um, I was like, that means I can kind of just do whatever I want. Right. Like, um, I don't have to use, a certain wax because that's what I was trained in or, um, you know, yeah, just, I was just like, the sky is really the limit. And for me, that's really, really exciting. Um, I think for some people that would be like, Oh my gosh, where do I go? How do I even start? And I was just like, I just want to learn everything. Like, um, and so from what wax am I going to use? Um, you know, I, I custom blend the fragrances, um, because I start with the life of a saint and then I translate that into scent, um, as opposed to like taking a scent, uh, and then saying, okay, I'm going to like put the saint name with it. And, and there's your Catholic candle. So Um, you start with the, 
you start with the life of the saint and and how do you is is do you have a specific procedure you follow to get from there to a distinct scent or is it you know mm-hmm. saint joseph i bet he smells like wood shavings so is, <laughs> it, is it kind of yeah. spur of the moment inspiration do you have a a procedure you follow like how do you get from a life of a saint to a particular scent mhm it's i would say there's some structure to it for sure um i don't know that every single scent journey has been the same though um and a lot of that has to do with well how much do we even know about this person my procedure is start with their litany um you know and if there's anything that they themselves wrote that we have i want to read that first before i read anything about us before i read someone else's opinion or research like i want to want to encounter them directly um and so that is really great for a lot of saints um like thomas aquinas obviously like spend the rest of my life reading him um therese and teresa and uh just all of these amazing amazing men and women left us so much in writing um but joseph doesn't have anything right uh saint michael the archangel doesn't have anything there's a um even other saints like dimphina that we have a candle for um there's a lot of saints that like we have stories about them that have been handed down but you're like, is this even really true? <laughs> like, um, am I just perpetuating, you know, kind of the the error here? Um, so I, but that's what I love. Like, I love deep diving into them, just like into the candle making itself and um, just really trying to tease out what was the reality of their life um, day to day? What do we know about their patronages and how does that shed light on who they were? And it's really, there isn't something where it's like, well, if I just read these things or say these prayers, a scent will appear. Um, and there I go. And, and for some of the scenes that I, I mean, I've got a list so long and, and that I would love to do, like Blessed Miguel Pro cannot for the life of me, like I've read his life inside and out multiple times. I love him, cannot figure out how to put his life in the scent. Maybe it'll come, but maybe it won't. Um, so there's a lot of people that like I love and appreciate, but it just doesn't work kind of. Um, and then there's other people who are just like, like Dimphna, to go back to her, that scent took me two weeks. Um, there's other scents I've been working on that it's year two and it still hasn't come together. So I think that's, Fun in the sense you just have to enjoy the process um, and kind of let it let it be a gift. Like yes, you have to do the work and put in the time and whatever. But at the end of the day, like I do feel like there's got to be some some way that like grace is is present through this. And it's not it's not just my effort. It's not just like oh look at what I created. It, when it comes together, maybe like you know, if you create anything, if you write something or you're putting music together or you're drawing or photographing something or whatever it is. And when it finally clicks and you're just like, of course, like that's what it's meant to be. Um, and it feels both like of your doing, but also completely outside of like so much bigger, you know, like that's when, you know, kind of, and, and the sense that we have, that's that's kind of how they've all come to be again like with no it's just kind of you keep plugging along and and i mean some of these scents i've trialed dozens and dozens and dozens of combinations of scents and it does or it doesn't work and yeah you just have to to keep going if all i could do is develop new scents like that would keep me busy forever but I run like a current business with 22 cents. Um, like it's, it's hard actually now to carve out time to work on new stuff because we're just trying to keep up with, with what we have and, and the reality of, of running a small business. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And you mentioned St. Dimphna a few times. So mm-hmm. uh, correct me if I'm getting my saints mixed up, but 
She is one of the patrons of mental health, right? She is, yeah. So I know that um, a lot of a lot of my students have a devotion to her. Uh, they they find her for that, and you know, she's a good intercessor, especially for young people today. Mm-hmm. And speaking of young people today, a <laughs> lot of them are very worried. <laughs> you know, they're worried about their vocations, their careers, college. They're very worried about the future, about everything that will follow graduation. I think a lot of them have this pressure to have it all figured out, right? To know by the time graduation day comes, where you're going, what you're doing, to have the whole path laid out. What advice would you give to those young people, the ones who are worried about the future? Because obviously, in your own story, you didn't know that you were going to be doing this until it was happening, right? Yeah. So how, I mean, obviously it's going to require openness to the Holy Spirit. So how does that work? What advice would you have for, especially maybe some of my students who are listening, who want to have that same openness, but they're worried about the future? Yeah, I think, gosh, I, I see that. I hear that. I see it in my own life. Um, and I think before maybe speaking to those people, I would, just want to say like, I have to be very conscious of not putting that pressure on other people, right? Because it's such a normal thing to ask, especially students like, oh, what are you doing after graduation? Or what kind of job are you going to get? And it's, it's fine. And it's normal. But also, like, it could be totally unhelpful. And um, my husband actually just finished his uh, PhD, um, and, and he was, a he was, um, what do you call it in grad school for the first 12 years that we were married. Um, and people were constantly like, what are you going to do? Where are you going to teach? Like whatever. And he's like, I'm just trying to be present right here and now. And we see what God is giving me show up where, you know, and if we're constantly like pushing people into the future, like that's not where grace is like grace is only in this particular present moment. And so I think for all of us to just realize that like, we all just kind of need a little bit of space um, to hear the voice of God, like in our lives at this moment, um, specifically to people who are kind of dealing with those bigger questions, right? Of what do I do with my life and who am I supposed to be? And what is my, you know, big V vocation? Um, Gosh, first of all, like there is an answer and it's good and it's beautiful and it's going to be the hardest thing you ever did. um, And also the most life giving and you will know when you will know, like, um, and that's kind of going back right to what you were saying of before of like, yeah, but how do I know? Or what is it? And like, it's a gift and you, you can't grasp it. Like you can't, you know, will it into being it's from God and he, it's hard, but like he will give it to you in his own good time. Um, and also it doesn't end right. Like right now, especially if you're in high school or college and it's just like, this is the rest of my life that I'm figuring out. Well, not really, because you're going to figure out what school or what major or which job to start with. And then life is going to keep happening to you. And like, we just don't know where we're going to end up. And that's okay. Like there's actually peace in surrendering that and being like, I just want to know what the next step is, is a prayer that I try and, and remind myself to pray. Um, the way that my dad puts it is close the doors that are harmful to me and open the one that you want me to walk through and help me to see it. Right. Um, and he's, he's so beautiful in his faith. He's kind of like gotten to the point where he's like, he will, whatever God wants him to do, he'll do it. He just wants, he just needs clarity, right? Like he just needs to know it is and he'll go, uh, which is so like St. Joseph himself. Um, I love that. Yeah. Close the doors that are harmful to me and open the one like, oh, because how often do we, we don't think of closed doors as a good thing. You know, our tendency is a door closed. That's almost the euphemism for I'm not getting my way, Mm -hmm. but it's, 
to mm-hmm. ask God, please close some doors, right? Yeah. Especially yeah. the ones that I'm tempted to walk through. You need to shut that door, make sure I can't get through it. Yeah. And I, <laughs> oh, I love that. And that's, you know, that idea of seeing one step at a time. Mm-hmm. That That's what we see in St. Joseph, right? He's told in a dream, or, or Mary, even if we back up, Mary goes to him and presents him with this situation. Gabriel doesn't pop in and say, hey, guys, sorry to interrupt. I want to give some context here. You know, um, it's only later that Joseph has that dream. And even then it's, don't be afraid. Here's what I want you to do next. And then Mm -hmm. another dream, go to Egypt. He doesn't say, you're going to go to Egypt. You'll spend this many months, this many years there. Eventually, you're going to come back. You're going to move to Nazareth. He, He doesn't. All he says is, take the child and his mother to Egypt. Right. And then he's there. And eventually he has another dream that says it's safe to go home. But he's only ever shown that next step. I, we see the same thing with Mary and the Annunciation. You know, the angel it says the last line of there, um, Mary gives her, you know, let it be done to me according to your word. And then the angel departed. It's like, okay, that was the end. That's all I needed. I'm going to go now. It's it's frustrating for us, right? To I, At least for me, I want to see the whole picture. I want to see the map. But I think that there's pride in that. If if we're being honest, I think a lot of that is in pride. Because deep down we're thinking, you know, if God shows me the whole plan, then I get to put my seal of approval on it. And I get to say, all right, yeah, this is a good plan. Good job, buddy. I'll do it. But God doesn't want that, right? He wants us to follow him. He wants us to, to submit to his will, to say, no, 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 you're in charge. And I think it's this great mercy that he only shows us one step at a time, because how difficult would it be to do that if we could see the whole plan? So I love that about St. Joseph. I love that about your story. And I, I think that's so important for young people to hear that, you know, you don't have to have it all figured out. Certainly not the day of graduation, not the first day of college, not the day you graduate college. You don't have to have it all figured out somebody already did you know Mm -hmm. and we see that i think that's one of the really concrete fruits from getting to know the saints is we do get to see the end right um like you know today right now in my own life there are so many open loops so many unanswered questions so many things where i don't know how they're gonna end up um but I can look at the life of Francis of Assisi, for example, and remember, okay, when when he was 20, he literally had no idea what he was doing with his life. He looked like a complete failure in front of his dad. Um, his friends didn't understand what the heck he was doing. And he, yeah, he was in a rough, rough place in his early 20s. And even after you know, kind of quote unquote, starting the Franciscans, it took years and years and years of what does this mean? How do I live it out? How do I care for these other men who are here now? Um, Over a whole lifetime, right? Like this stuff gets worked out and, and we grow in virtue and holiness. And it it isn't until the end that everything makes sense. Um, and I think that's, again, like, why do we go to the saints is because we see, okay, they've been here, they've done that, like, Elizabeth knew, like, Francis knew, like, all of these saints, like, they get it, they walked this long before we did, um, and they made it, right? Like, God was good, and he was faithful, and his grace was there for them at every moment, and we have to trust that it's the same God, <laughs> you know, that he is just as present and just as alive as he was when Francis was here um, to now and, and in the future as well, and to trust that to him. Beautiful. So especially, I mean, really everybody, but especially my students who are listening, keep trusting. There is a plan. God knows it. He will tell you exactly as much as you need to know right now. And um, yeah, keep praying that prayer close the doors that are harmful, open the ones that I need to walk through, right? Um, and and like Anna said, you know, it, you kind of snuck it in there. I don't even know if everybody caught it. When you find your vocation, it will be the hardest thing you've ever done. It, it absolutely will be, but that's okay. It's, it's a feature, not a bug, right? Jesus says, 
take up your cross daily. He's going to give you a good way to do that. So Mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, we we could talk all day about devotion to the saints and um, especially St. Joseph and just how much of an impact he's had on both of our lives. Um, I'm I'm always grateful for the opportunity to talk about St. Joseph. Like I said earlier, he's become one of my favorites. He's he's always looking out for me. And so I, I think that's where we'll have to wrap it up for today. Um, don't forget to check out the show notes on bonuspointspodcast.com. There you will find a link to Court of Candles so that you can bring sense inspired by saints in the faith into your home. We will also uh, have a link to the Litany of St. Joseph and the Holy Cloak Novena. We'll link to some of our favorite books about St. Joseph, both the two that we talked about in the episode and a few others. And also be sure to go back and listen to episode 11, which was all about the life of St. Joseph and what a Joseph-inspired spirituality will look like. Um, So thank you once again to Anna Camacho for joining us today. Thank you for listening as we continue every episode to put out into the deep to explore the world of theology and beyond. Anna, thanks again for being on the show. Thanks so much, Mr. Asa.